What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and today I've got a kind of first part of a two-parter video for you and this is partly because it's a really big project and partly because I encountered an issue halfway through the build for it that stopped me pretty much dead in my tracks for a bit and may actually mean that there's no second part to see whether or not I can find a workaround or whether you guys can help me out with it. So, diving straight in, what we have in front of me here, you'll kind of recognise the layout from some of my recent sort of modular projection sort of yards or whatever you want to call them. But this is essentially designed to be the the be-all and end-all version of that. So I'm going to dive straight in and show you the basics of how it's going to work. Uh, I'm not going to print something out live with it because of the issue. So if we jump in here, basically we have a couple of these carts, one up here, one down the bottom, and these can be used at the moment to control it and move this entire sort of bank of welders and grinders on the back, you'll notice, forwards and backwards. So the deal here is that this is the sort of propulsion method I've used to replace pistons and enable me to make this pretty much infinitely expandable. You know, these rails are really easy to extend at any point you want. And the idea would be, that's just, um, I'm just moving up and moving quite slowly because uh, in reality, this thing would need to move quite slowly in order to weld whatever it's moving through. And the idea behind it is to co incorporate sort of everything I've done up until this point as far as these projection setups are concerned. So it will have the ability to build modular ships like I've been doing, but not just modular ships that build in a straight line, but modular ships that can be built sort of horizontally, vertically, in all different directions, or the ability to basically print any ship that you've already got with a couple of, restraint, uh, of restrictions, which I'll talk about in a second. But first, we're going to go up. Uh, as I said, I'm not actually going to weld this. I'm going to switch to some footage of it welding while I talk a little bit further about exactly what the issue is with it and that is something at the moment with welders means that if you have welders overlapping each other so in other words if you have it so that the welders are welding the same area you have two welders next to each other or even two welders near to each other it will cause massive sim speed drops and massive fps drops alongside it uh, now you can sort of fix that by removing some of the welders and being as efficient as you possibly can with how many welders you're using. But even then, to get proper welder coverage where there's no gaps, you end up with a bit of overlap, which means you end up with this horrible sim speed issue. So you'll notice from the video I've been playing, this is sped up probably about 10 times in order to get it to come out in a reasonable length of time. But yeah, jumping back into this, you can see that this thing moves up to the front here. Uh, you can imagine how this is going to move backwards and forwards on these rails, and these rails are done similar to how my cable car system has worked. So there's some wheels in here. Uh, at the moment, they aren't actually touching all the time. They are simply there to stop this thing from moving around and act as a, a guide for the thrusters. And the reason I've gone with thrusters as well as wheels is because there's no way of controlling wheels to turn their movement on and off through a timer block. Um, and so when I come to automate this whole thing, uh, that is going to require the thrusters in order to have it automated. The other thing I've done here is this sort of main wall, and apologies for the FPS drops, what I should have done is turn the lights off before I started guiding you around, but yeah, is it, the main wall has a number of different connection methods on it. The idea being that you could, if you wanted, print five ships at once with this, or you know, however many ships at once. But equally, you can also print pretty much everything you want, anything you want. So you notice I've got the blue ship here, and all I did was put a merge block on the front of it. Um, so we've got this merge block here. You could, if you really wanted, just build it connected to a block and grind away that block afterwards. But this is more than capable of building that, and this sort of talk a little bit about what I plan to do once I get to sort of redo this into a, a final version, essentially. So we've got all this grinder wall on the back here, and that's designed to be that this, shit, this sort of station will do both jobs. So this flat, heavy armoured wall at the back has a bunch of landing pads buried into it, and you can get close enough that these will hold you in place up against this wall while that grinder wall removes everything. And, of course, everything is conveyed up, so if I come around the back here, this is all linked into a big system. You can see there's a couple of connectors on poles there. Those will line up with connect they or those line up with these ones on the wall itself so that you can refuel and sort of refill this and this is an entire layer of medium cargo containers in there all conveyed up again and then on the front here you can see what I've had to do to cut down on the number of welders um, there was about 1200 welders on here because I had every square filled now obviously there's probably about 700 
it's still too much of an overlap and it is the overlap it's nothing to do with the volume of welders if i do this in a straight cross grid instead of in this checkerboard pattern it doesn't have the problem but it also misses blocks so that's that side of things if i just come around i'll show you inside and what i plan for in here um, the eventual idea for this facility is it is going to be the the trident production yards hence the sort of symbolism slash logo i've got running around on the side uh, and then coming down here we've got a landing pad for people coming in and then in here will be where all of the control actually takes place so again I haven't set this up but it's ready to be set up so it's all cargoed up we've got a whole selection of projectors there's going to be more projectors once I add in the modular bits obviously and then we've got the usual controls like I had before on the walls to tell you exactly what to do with each of them so unfortunately because of that little welder bug meaning that it doesn't run well enough that I can actually show you it in anything other than a sped up recording and that in itself might be too much of a flaw for this to continue but also it was such a big build i wanted to show you guys the time lapse and this this far before i went through the slightly less interesting automation process messed around with timers and so on um, like you can see here my idea will be to to move the cart is going to start and stop using these sensors so instead of having a timed system where it turns the thrusters on for x number of seconds uh, it's the sensor that turns the thrusters on and off and that's the sort of idea. I'd be really interested to see what you guys think could be added to this. Um, whether you guys have got any solutions for this sort of welder overlap problem. I, I don't believe there is a solution. I do believe it to be a bug. Uh, I've certainly found plenty of reports in the bug report forum. And it's something that I've encountered previously as well. One of the Drone Wars sessions got sort of cooled off because of this issue with the map. Um, so maybe you guys have got a solution for that. Maybe you don't. Maybe we just need to wait for it to be fixed. But I hope you like the idea anyway. Please throw them out. Any ideas of what i should do with it to make it even cooler but i do think it's quite nice already that you can pretty much load any ship you want into this and it will build it up to the point where if i um open up my that's the wrong one if i open up my blueprints and get something really big like where's the leviathan which is actually called iron sides in my uh, my blueprints list but once this is loaded up you'll see that even this thing will actually fit in this area it is capable of building some really enormous craft this um, and without some of the issues that the other version had with the pistons limiting you and without some of the issues the other version had with um, how to get the craft out of this again so you can see that this this thing will actually if i can move around in this lag uh, this thing will actually fit inside this rig um, it won't let me paste it because of where the, the wall is at the moment, but you get the idea. It will take an enormous ship, and if at any point you needed to extend it, I mean, the grinders perhaps get a bit in the way of this, but you could quite easily just cut off this back section and put these beams out as long as you need them to be. Oh, and I've noticed I've missed a bit. Live missed a bit. This, obviously should all be conveyors just there um, I think I had the cart actually sitting on that section while I was building it so I forgot to replace them in so I will update that before I uh, publish the world for everybody but I hope you like the idea a bit unusual for me to not be doing like here's a complete shiny idea where you can press the buttons and it works um, but I, I don't know may maybe this is an appropriate thing for me to be doing with the bigger build because they're certainly getting a bit difficult to put out regularly twice a week something new interesting but also do some of these bigger things where i come up with the more crazy ideas so if you liked it please hit like please hit subscribe share really helps me and the channel out and otherwise thanks a lot for watching guys i'll catch you next time